So this week, uh, we're going to just focus on mostly these first, se second and third things that light does uh, that also are similar to what waves do. We'll talk briefly about polarization, uh, and then in future weeks, we'll look more at diffraction and the implications of that. Uh, but these are all things that light does that waves do also. So the first one's polarization. Now, polarization is good evidence for the fact that light behaves like waves because if, if light were particles and we were to think about polarizing filters much like these fences, then particles would just get through. Uh, there might be some that would bounce back and be reflected because they hit the boards, uh, but otherwise, ones that would hit that, that gap would be able to travel through. Polarizing filters, though, um, if they're orientated a certain way, they allow light through. But if we were to rotate a second filter so that it's orientated perpendicular to the first filter, we notice that no light gets through at all. Now, movie theater glasses work on this idea. Uh, so when you look at a screen, the reason why it seems blurry is you have two different images actually coming to your eye. Uh, and then the glasses that you wear have different polarizing filters. So one side allows a certain image to that side. The other side allows a different, slightly different image, and then your brain pieces it together into this 3D picture. Now the other thing that light does is it reflects. Um, now, this isn't really something that's unique to waves. We know particles would as well, uh, but we're going to look at light and how it reflects. Now, this is the law of reflection. The law of reflection says that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So the angle that light or that a wave will hit a reflective surface, it'll be reflected off that same angle. Now, it is important to understand that we're measuring from this normal line, um, so that is important to note uh, when we're looking at this. Now, what we are going to focus on is we are going to focus on light reflecting off of uh, concave and convex mirrors. Now, a concave mirror looks like this, and this causes light to be focused to a point. Now, we can draw ray diagrams, and then we're also going to look at formulas when we look at the different images that are formed here. Now, when we draw these ray diagrams, there's a couple of things we need to know. C is the center of curvature. So if we were to think of this mirror as a big circle, C is the radius, so the distance to the center of that mirror. F is the focal length. Now, this is one half of C. That's what the focal length is, or one half of the radius. So that's important to note as well. What the focal point is, is that is where light is actually going to meet up, and, and that is where the point where it's going to be reflected to. Now we can draw ray diagrams, and we can kind of learn about this mirror in that process. So this is the back of the mirror. This other side is the front of the mirror. So if we have light that enters through the focal point, this is kind of the first ray we're going to look at. So it enters through the focal point. This mirror is going to cause it to bend in. So the first ray, any ray that enters through a focal point is going to be reflected parallel to the principal axis you'll notice that the light bends in. If it didn't bend in, it would be reflected back at this angle, but it's not. The next one is any light ray that enters parallel to the principal axis is going to be reflected through the focal point. And it will meet up here. The third one is any ray that enters through the center of curvature now this one's hard to see, we really have to follow that mirror back, is going to come directly through, uh, back through the center. So this one will bounce right back. Now this ray diagram is showing what happens when light that is 
emitted or light that is reflected off the top of this object strikes a mirror. So the top of this object is going to be sending information through these rays that are then reflected. And the top of the object is going to appear down here. The bottom of the object is just going to be reflected straight in and straight out and going to appear down here. But we're going to have an image that actually appears here. Now this image is going to have some characteristics. This image, you'll notice, is upside down. So it's an upside down image. This image is also smaller. You'll see that if we draw this, it's a smaller image than the actual thing we were starting with. Now we also say that this is a real image because there are real light rays here. If you think about an actual mirror, when you stand in front of it in the morning, there's a reflection that you see behind. If you were to go behind the mirror, you would see that there's not actually another you there. That's a virtual image. Now this image is different in that this is a real image. There are actual light rays meeting that point. If we were to put a screen at that point, we would actually see an image that's formed. So here's an example of a, so here's a, a concave converging mirror. Here's an example of a real image. Uh, so this, there's actually light rays hitting this screen. So there's a the mirror, here's our object, it's a candle. And then when I put, you'll see when I move this screen here, you can see the actual image of the candle. So it's upside down but it's a real image. So there's actually light rays hitting that point. Now, if I were to move this candle even closer to the mirror, so inside the focal length, now there's no place behind it where those light rays are gonna meet up. There's no real image. In order to see that image, I need to actually look into the mirror. This might be hard with this candle. So you can see a bit of it here. So I look into the mirror and then I can see this virtual image that's actually in the mirror. Whenever we do these types of questions, there are three things that, uh, three types of characteristics that we'll be asked to do. Uh, the one is the magnification. Is it the same? Is it larger? Is it smaller? The next is the actual attitude of the image. Is it going to be upright or is it going to be virtual? And the last one is the type. Oh yeah, real virtual the attitude. Is it upright or is it virtual? inverted? Those are the, the three ways we're going to be asked to classify it. Sorry, I was trying to draw this as I thought. Now here we have those three rays that we talked about before. You'll notice that if we look now on this side of the mirror, those rays never meet up. So we're not going to have a real image formed anywhere on this side of the mirror. In order to see kind of where that image is, we take these reflected rays and we follow them back behind the mirror. If I were to observe from here, this ray would appear to be coming from this dotted red line behind the mirror. If I were to look at this one that uh, it went in parallel and then came out through the focus, it's going to appear to be coming from here behind the mirror. And if I look at this one that went through the center of curvature and came straight out, it's going to appear to be coming from here. So now we have an image that's being formed, but this image is behind the mirror. There aren't any light rays actually at that point. This is a virtual image. So even though it appears like there's an image there, that image is virtual. Now this image is virtual. It's upright. So this one's straight up. It's erect. Um, and it looks like it is larger. So those are the characteristics of that image. Now, when we look at the characteristics of these types of images, so here's my mirror, here's C, here's the focal length. There is a, 
a, a quick saying that helps us to remember some of these characteristics. So, sir, ner, ber, no, love. So for a mirror that is going to focus light to a point, anything that is outside the center of curvature or the radius is going to be smaller, inverted, and a real image. Anything at the center of curvature is going to be normal, the same size, inverted, and a real image. Anything in between the center of curvature and the focal point will be bigger, inverted, and a real image. Anything at the focal point will not form an image. And then finally, anything inside the focal point will be larger, upright, and virtual. So, Cerner burn no love is a good mnemonic to remember the characteristics of the images at these different points. To add to this mnemonic is sub. And that is only for these types, these diverging mirrors are always going to form images that are smaller, upright, and virtual. So, sir, ner, ber, no, love, self is a, a good mnemonic for remembering uh, the characteristics of these types of images. Smaller, inverted, real. Normal, inverted, real. Bigger, inverted, real. No image. Larger, upright, and virtual. And then diverging mirrors will always form smaller, upright, and virtual images. You can try this with a spoon. A spoon is a great... Um, a way to look at all of these types because there's two sides to the spoon. So maybe try that out um, and look at the types of images that you can make. No burn, no love. It also works for lenses. So this also works, sir, no burn, no love, for a converging lens, a lens that causes light rays to be focused towards a point is also going to follow this sir, no burn, no love. Diverging lenses, just like diverging mirrors, are always going to be smaller, upright, and virtual. So, sir, ner, ber, no, love, sub, allows us to very quickly determine the characteristics of these types of apparatuses. And if we need specific numbers, then we can use those formulas. Uh, remember that any time our di is negative, that's a virtual image. A positive di will be real. Anytime my magnification is greater than zero, that's going to be larger. But a positive magnification is upright. A negative magnification is inverted. And then the, the size of the magnification tells us how much larger or smaller it is. Similar to the mirror in this diagram, this is like an ancient Greek weapon used to destroy ships where it's a reflective surface and it causes light to converge. So that's a concave mirror. The other type of mirror we're going to look at is a diverging mirror. And that's the type that you see maybe in convenience stores uh, or some of these places where people want to watch you while you're shopping so that you don't put stuff into your pockets. Those are diverging. So the other thing I like form, the mnemonic. Now there's another type of mirror called a convex mirror. Now this causes light rays to diverge. Now when we look at these images, we treat these liberal light rays the same. So first, if I have a ray that comes in parallel to this principal axis, we think about this as a diverging mirror. So it's supposed to cause light to be to spread out, that means it's going to be coming out from the focal length. You'll notice the focal length is on the other side here in the upside down or in virtual land. The other ray, so now this is entering towards the focus, so it wants to go to the focus, it's going to be reflected out parallel to the principal axis. And then the final one going in to the center of curvature is reflected straight back. So these are my three rays. 
but now the focal length is on the other side in virtual n and the upside down. This is a reflective surface, so no light can actually get there. Now, you'll notice again that the light rays don't meet up here in the real world at all. So we need to track back these reflected rays and see where do they actually meet up. So this reflected one came from the focus. The center of curvature one came straight out. And then this one came parallel out this way. We have an image here, it's really tiny, where light rays aren't actually meeting up. So this image is smaller, it is upright, and it is virtual. This Now when it comes to mirrors and also lenses, we have two equations that are on our formula sheet. Uh, the first is 1 over f equals 1 over dou plus 1 over di. So 1 over the focal length is equal to 1 over dou, so the distance from the mirror to the object, plus 1 over di, the distance from the mirror to the image. We need to remember that these are dou's and di's, and, and that's 1 over that, so we need to make sure we do the reciprocal. In this bottom equation now, we have magnification is equal to hi over ho, or negative di over do. Uh, so the height of the image over the height of the object is equal to negative of the distance of the image over the distance of the object. Back to... Now some things that we do need to keep in mind, and this is important, for converging lenses, uh, or sorry, converging mirrors or concave mirrors, the focal length is positive. Anything that is negative is going to be a virtual image or upside down. And if we look at a diverging mirror, so here's a diverging mirror or a convex mirror, the focal length is negative because there's no light rays at that point. Uh, so we need to keep that in mind when we're doing these calculations. So here's a question. We have a diverging mirror, has a radius of 20 centimeters, an object placed 30 centimeters in front of the mirror. Determine where the image will appear. So radius of 20 centimeters means a focal length of 10 centimeters. I want to find the image, so that's di. So 1 over f is equal to 1 over do plus 1 over di. So 1 over f minus 1 over do is equal to 1 over di. So I can do that in my calculator. Now one thing to remember is that it's a diverging mirror, so that focal length needs to be negative. So 1 divided by negative 10 minus 1 divided by 30 gives me negative 0.133, and then the reciprocal of that is negative 7.5 centimeters. So this negative is important because that tells me that it is a virtual image. So that's virtual. Um, and the 7.5 centimeters tells me that it'll be 7.5 centimeters on that side. If I wanna find the magnification, so I can use the height of the image or the object if I had them. And this one, I I know, I guess first I need to find the magn magnification. So magnification is negative high over ho. Not negative high over ho, sorry. Magnification is negative di over do. It's equal to high over ho. I want to find how tall the image is. First, maybe I'll calculate the magnification. So negative, negative 7.5 centimeters divided by 30 centimeters. So I have 7.5 divided by 30 is a magnification of 0.25. Now this tells me some things. So this 0.25 tells me that it will be a quarter of the size. And the fact that it's positive tells me that it will be upright. 
So this will be upright and it will be smaller. If I want to find the height of the image, well, that's my magnification times the height of my object. So the height of my image, uh, so if my object was five centimeters tall, uh, times 0.25, that means my image is going to be 1.25 centimeters tall. So those are those formulas. The thing to keep in mind is they're negative for diverging mirrors, or things that cause light rays to actually diverge. One other thing we're going to talk about this week is also lenses. Now lenses follow similar rules, however they let light actually go through them as opposed to being reflected off. Now because they still go through them and they still follow these rules, uh, so the first is these converging lenses. So a converging lens causes light rays to bend in. Uh, now the, the first ray is any ray that comes in through the focus, so it hits this lens, is going to be bent towards and come parallel to the principal axis. So again, this lens is bending light towards it. Uh, through refraction. The next is any ray parallel is going to be refracted through the focus. Now there's two focuses here. So the one we need to use is the one that's actually going to bend light rays in because this is a converging mirror. So I'm going to use this second focus. It bends light rays in. The third one is any ray through the center is going to go straight through. So here we have an image being formed here. Now, it's important to note that this is a lens, so light rays are actually going to travel through it. So this is a real image, and it's upside down. So it's a real image, it's upside down, um, and I think it's bigger. I guess I missed that point, it's probably here, uh, and it's going to be larger. So our form will still work for those. For a diverging mirror, same thing. The first ray comes in parallel. Now this is going to diverge it. So I'm not going to use that focus. I'm going to use this, fo this first focus in order for that light ray to diverge because it's causing light rays to disperse and get farther away from each other. Now we have this other ray uh, that comes in through the focus. Now we need to be careful which focus we use when it enters uh, because these light rays need to be getting further apart. So I can't use this first one. I'm gonna, it enters as if it's going through this farther focus and then it is refracted parallel to the perpendicular axes. Uh, so that one again is bending away. And then the last ray is through the center Let's go straight through the center. You'll notice again that these rays don't meet up here at all. So there's no real image formed where actual light rays are traveling. In order to find out the image that's formed, we need to track these back where they would appear to be coming from. And we get a virtual image. So here we have a smaller image that is upright and it's virtual. In order to see it, I would need to look from this side of the lens and I would see a virtual image on the other side of that lens. For formulas, for converging and diverging lenses, uh, it is the same thing as for mirrors. Lenses that move light towards the focus are going to have a positive focal length image uh, lenses that actually cause light rays to diverge are going to have negative focal length. So those are important in those calculations as well. 